Hey everybody, welcome to Cubs Outlet episode 414, 414. It is an on the road show. We are at Claw 17 in Cleveland, Ohio, downtown. And uh, three quarters of the show is here, so I'm super excited about it. Those of you that already know who I am, uh, recognize me by my voice, which is probably very annoying. I'm Gary, uh, Gabriel73, and with me are... Um, I'm Damon, uh, Theater Cub 79, and for this weekend, I've been Pop Umbra. <laughs> I'm Chester, and apparently I'm Media Pass. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're not Multi Pass. <laughs> multi Pass. Multi Pass. Nice fifth element reference. <laughs> Thank you. Geekery abounds. So we are actually in uh, Chester's upgraded room here at the West End downtown, uh, <laughs> and his roommates, uh, Berlick and Dozer, have graciously left, uh, although they could have sat and participated. They could have. But they decided they wanted to go to Vendor Mart for a little bit. So uh, this is kind of a slapdash quickie uh, in a way. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Hand gestures aside, uh, <laughs> just because we are smashing this in the afternoon on Saturday b between a.m. and p.m. workshop yes. sessions. Yeah. Uh, and like I got two in this morning, and I might go to one after this. Uh, it depends on how the stuff is. Yeah, for me, actually, what's funny is I've been like, oh, we're going to do all these shows, and I'm going to go see all these classes. I've literally been to two. Same for me. I, I I intended to go to two yesterday. I only made one because of being here from Thursday night. We'll go back to that in a moment. Uh, I was here so late that I decided to get more sleep than not sleep, and so I missed the first AM session time. So I only got the one, and then yeah. uh, went. Which is surprising because I actually made the first AM one. Oh, okay. On Friday. Yeah, so I only made the one that I went to the bathhouse thing yesterday, so today I was more like, if I'm going to get them in, I'm at least going to try to get two this morning. So I like was about two, three minutes late to the first one at 10 a.m., but was probably the best session so far that I've attended this cool. weekend, but it was it was pretty good. So yeah, it's been it's been a bit like very yeah. quick and, and running through stuff. True that. That's one of the biggest things I've been dealing with. I've been to call, this is my third claw. I skipped last year. And the thing that I'm having the most difficulty with is maintaining time. Like we've been up, Jim and I have been up since 8.30 this morning. We got up at eight yesterday morning. And the idea was to give us enough time so we can get breakfast and then go to classes. And um, yeah, like I'm literally like, ooh, here's a class and then lunch and then here's another class and um, dinner. And then <laughs> fun and festivities in the evening. So it's just a lot of proper planning prevents piss poor performance. Yeah, the, like the six P's are really key for this weekend and it's a little bit overwhelming. I was just at a um, puppy mental health uh, workshop oh. and the interesting thing was the guy who was a kind of lead facilitating made a reference. I don't know if these numbers are accurate, but he said last year there was 86 workshop sessions. This year's there's 120. Yes. And the hour that just happened, there were 10 workshops simultaneously. And so they said at first, we don't know how many people are gonna show up. There was nearly 50, it was like a packed room. I have a picture on my phone, I'll show you guys later yeah. that I didn't send in the chat of what the room looked like. It was yeah. pretty lecture style, but yeah. like by the time like we got it about 20 minutes into it, it was like, it almost was becoming standing room only yeah. or kneeling room only or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, pups, so. the class I just left um, was um, nips, pits, and tits, no, nips, Pits and touch, oh my. Um, it was all about nipple play and pit play and all that stuff. And we got to class full right at um, 11.45 and then people just kept coming in. So we yeah, had a very big, stragglers. big class. Well, the stragglers issue might be because of location though. We've had this big discussion this weekend. All, right. all of us that are kind of familiar with each other or know each other, you know, uh, the three of us, Chess, uh, Tony, Tammy, Ducky, Tracy, you know, Marta, everyone. Oh, see, well, I spent a couple hours on the cigar deck last night. That's the only way I got to see them, so to speak. But we were having this big chat about Tony was the first one that was like about the multiple building issue. And I was like, what? I didn't notice those multiple buildings. And he said, yeah, he's like, there's like three or four different buildings. And I was like, what the? So we start looking at the schedule and I'm like, Where, what's the ACOM thing? And then I realized looking at the maps in the app that it's first floor connected. So that's yeah. not too bad. So it's technically two buildings, but your travel is pretty minimal, but then the Academy's off-site, yep. the Hampton is off-site, 
Uh, and At least the Hamptons only, you know, a block, a and, block a and a half away. But right. the academy, you have to plan for that. If you get done with one class at 12 o'clock and your class right. at the academy starts at 12.15, you are not going to make it on time. Yeah. Right. Most likely Unless, you need at least a half an hour driving. because you have to leave the, the first session earlier to get to be downstairs to leave at the, on the half hour mark to get the so, shuttle and try to be wherever. So let's, let's talk about the shuttle, shall we? Shall we? Yes. Okay. okay. So Jim and I actually talked about, we had a long discussion yesterday about it. We do not like the fact that it's a party bus. It's not functional. Oh, I think I know where you're going to go with this. <laughs> and okay. So to help explain, I think the only shuttle service at Claw this weekend is provided by a limousine service locally. And it's a, like what you think of as a classic two. bachelor or bachelorette party bus where it's right. like actually very nice like soft leather seating yeah. cup holders like it's the nice on the inside yeah. right but it only holds like so many people 20 15 like so somewhere in that yeah. range maybe two dozen yeah and they do have two so um backtrack a bit so we'll talk about the weekend a, um, a bit friday evening was no thursday, thursday evening, evening was the um claw rocks the hall where it was at the rock and roll mm -hmm. um, music hall of fame and me, I keep saying me and Jim. Jim is here. My, my partner's here, so in case you didn't realize. Um, we went and we were leaving. We were ready to go. Um, we stepped outside. There's a massive pile of people waiting for the shuttle. Mm -hmm. And the shuttle arrives. And it's full. Like, all the seats were taken. Um, a couple of people get off, whatever. But then you have this massive pile of people right. trying to get on. Um, it's the party bus. I I like the idea behind it. There's music playing. It's you know loungy kind of feel. But honestly, for this kind of event, for the number of people are here, I think I was at this the class I went to. They said two thousand twenty six hundred at least. Um, that's not gonna do it. That's just no matter how many circles around. And since everything is so kind of not far apart but far enough apart that you can't just like do a loop you have to go here and then turn here and then go this way and then go around back to the it's not it's not functional they so, probably would have been better off to have a fleet even though it's way more expensive and have have a academy bus and a flex bus yeah. and it, you know what I mean like yeah. so that way you know like that's the one that you need to take that will constantly just go to that one destination and then now it's harder on the participant because you have to look for a sign in a window or and hopefully they're color coded or something so you know it doesn't even go. have to do with that it TBRU does this where they have several different buses and there is typically a person that's inside the hotel on a walkie-talkie they're constantly in communication with right. the drivers and then there's always somebody outside acting as a you know flight attendant or flight attendant a uh, uh, traffic attendant right. and he sees bus number whatever pull up and he's like okay if you're going here right. this is your bus yeah. to back up really quick Damon on Friday night when we decided to go to the Hall of Fame Thursday, um, Thursday night sorry we all went downstairs was waiting outside huge group of people and we all luckily Dana and Joe were like the first five people on the bus so we all sat down and everybody filled up the seats people kept coming in and we kept getting closer and closer and you know there's jokes about it's okay you can sit on my lap and um, what ended up happening is there was enough people standing in the aisle and I figured, okay, well, we're going to be taking off. And then all of a sudden, the guy comes over the speaker. He's like, everybody needs to be seated before we move. It's it's actually... It, Is that a state a law? law? Yeah. Okay. And we're like, okay, well, that's fine. It's Sit on because, my lap. Because and... those buses don't have the proper structure for movement. Oh, okay. Think like a subway, how there's a handrail yeah, and there's yeah. hand straps in that. In the event of an accident, it's meant to provide you some support. Well, likely. there was handrails in there. Kind of. Not in the one I rode. They're different, that sort of thing. Each one is well, kind of a different one. Well, the mm. the black one has um, a straight rail, and the white one has these kind of curved rails, but they cover the entire bus. Like, it curves here, and as it ends, the opposite start side starts. Mm. But it's, it's, 
But yeah, it must be some kind of state law, which was fine. People sat down. Somebody sat on my lap, and like there was a cup holder in between us, so they were like half on the cup holder, half on me, and some other guy was sitting like on both of our legs, and that was fine. I didn't have a problem with it. We were only going the the block and a half away, or yeah. three blocks, whatever it was. But yeah, when we were on our way to the bathhouse, they were like, nope, everybody has to be seated. Nobody can stand. No lap sitting, nothing. And I'm like, are you kidding? We're going to be st sitting here forever waiting for the next bus. Mm. That's weird. Because that's the thing. Like, I've gotten different. I didn't take the bus back from um, the asylum, uh, not the asylum, the flex spa, because of um, we had to be here for the couples of third speed dating, which I'll also get to in a second. Um, uh, so we, I ended up doing lift because we need to be back in like 15 minutes. Um, so, yeah. Um, side note, is your phone going to shut off if it's not plugged in? What do you mean it's not plugged in? Because the TV just went off. So I don't know if it's still recording. Oh. Um, no, it should be fine. Okay, in a second. Um, no, we're still going. Not that I want to turn this into a let's bitch about all the shit wrong with Claw session. But no, I mean, I think, here's the thing is, you know, we're, I think that's the caveat. Like, when we do on the road shows, we intentionally try to not, like, paint the picture of the event in, in negative light. Yeah. However, if there are areas of opportunity for improvement, like, discussing it can help other attendees understand like when you go to an event like here are some things that may or may not happen yeah. you know and especially if you're an event planner <laughs> like you know what i mean and like yeah. this stuff comes up like this is part of the education that you can look at it as a as basically you know oh how do we avoid that or whatever yeah. it is. so and, it, and it's not to say that claw is a bad event we just this year very interestingly there seems to have been something and no one knows knows what's happened but a lot of us who are more uh, type A, like people that are engaged, volunteer, plan, whatever, are the ones that are all coalescing around this theme of something's off this year in the fact that there seems to not have been communication or like detail orientation on specific things. So like the transportation is one aspect, like if there's only two, but you've got 2,600 people and they only see 26 at a time, like you, you handled what a one percent total with two buses like that's yeah you know not that everyone's going to go every place but and and that was the thing like there were issues like for for example um to getting to the flex spa we all everyone gets let off at this like in front of basically in front of the bean bowl or whatever correct and yeah, we got let off at an alley and i'm like just I got off the bus and I just started walking with the group. Yeah. Well, now on the bus when I went to the spa, which I was on the trip right before you, because you were like, I'm waiting, f I'm like, I'm waiting to leave or whatever. And I was like, oh, I'm already on the one that literally, like, as soon as I got just your message, out. I just pulled away. So when we get there, we actually had a volunteer attendant on ours that was instructing and explaining things and talking to the bus driver. He was really cute too. So he, he says, when we get there, he said, um, he said, you go around the side of the building to get in, and he said, I believe it's the, the alley entrance. So that's what we did. And I was the last one off. Even though I was in the very first seat, everyone immediately started getting up and getting off at that stop. So I just kind of like turned my feet a little bit to be out of the way and just waited for everybody. Mm -hmm. So Aaron makes fun of me. He's like, he's like, I thought you were getting up here. I was like, I am. I was just waiting and trying to be polite. Because now it's like, really, you're calling out like, <laughs> so I mean, it's no, yeah, you know, I'm not being shady against them. I just thought it was funny. I was kind of like, really, dude, like I'm just trying to be nice. So I go and I get off, and then there's all these people in front of us, and they get up to the side door in the alley, and there's notably a sign that says something about workshops or whatever. Yeah. And we're all like, what the hell does that mean? I guess we don't go in. So then we have to walk all, all, the, way all the way around. And I haven't been to Flex in years, and as soon as we turned the corner and I saw the cement wall, and I was like, oh, that's right. You have to go all the way down to the end of the cinder block wall through the parking lot in the main entrance, yeah. and then you know, wait Voila. there while they do all this processing and stuff. Yeah, that's what happened to us. And it's, it's, I think what it is, it's just a lack of communication because there seems to be, like you said, something is off. Yeah. Like, look what happened to Chess and uh, Tony trying to find the cigar deck. Right, I know that so now that we know what the situation is, 
I can see where perhaps nobody kind of thought it through, yeah. but that goes back to the session I went to this morning, the event planners meeting. Um, I'm so, if that was the one I went to that I was a couple minutes late for, but they haven't really technically started yet. There was like uh, 13, 14 of us in the room. I took mad notes on my phone the entire time. I already created a Google Doc. I shared it with one of my committee members. I posted on Facebook that I went to it. What, and then someone who puts on another event commented and was like, can I get a copy? Like, like to see like you know what the ideas and stuff were. But one of the interesting things that was set out of that, which I thought was so effective, and that's probably where the ball got dropped is, walk through your spaces. Yeah. Be an attendee and think about the experience and try to understand what needs to be hit done here and what is missing is, Cigar deck is the fifth floor, is only accessible through one elevator that goes to G5, which is actually a garage, garage level. Yep. Like that stuff was missing. Had all that been put into the app at least, people yeah. would have known, oh, I've got to look for, and then all you have to do is create a symbol, like a cigar, you know what I mean, or yeah. something, so people would know, oh, this is the elevator that goes to that thing or whatever. Like, yeah. same thing uh, yesterday. We. We, Dozer and I, got ready to go down to photograph the pup mosh, and we're like, okay, it's uh, floor six in whatever name of the room Orchid is. Orchid West Ballroom. Orchid West Ballroom. Right. And we go downstairs, and we come off the elevator, and I'm like, well, I know it's not that way, so it's got to be over here. And we come out into that atrium area where they've got the little... Right, it's got an opening cart. and a little, like, uh, concession stand bar. And I'm looking around, thing. and I'm like, oh, well, this is a ballroom. And then I peek my head in there, east. and there's bingo going on. That was west. The puppy mosh was in east. Oh, okay, right. Sorry. So it was the alternate opposite. So then I turn around and ask one of the security guards, or, you know, the volunteer security guards, mm -hmm. um, where do we go for the mosh? And he's like, you know, I'm not really sure. You are one of the security people. You should know this. Well, you but, should be briefed. Or at least have a map on you or a list or something. Yeah, I've got my Yap app. Sure, right. I can look it up. But all it says is six, right. Right. floor six, orchid. So The only reason why I knew where it was is because I had actually wandered previously and because I had been in the other ballroom for Flogging 101 session yesterday, then I realized, like, oh, now I understand the layout of the building and the oppositeness of all the law. So you have to... But I mean, it was, I understand the strategy behind it because going, because the pop mosh was very popular <laughs> and you have to walk that hallway all the way down past the bar and everything. And that's where the auction was. So, I mean, I immediately, I was like, well, that was some smart thinking, like, and like, it was very visual if people weren't standing in front of it, you know, like there was a lot of stuff to look at and like, yeah. so I, but I think, I mean, the time that I walked through and Damon, you met up with me in the line, it was like, we're trying to get into the mosh like as quickly as possible because it's about to begin. So yeah. It, I was just reminded about our conversation that you sent when you were trying to get here and make it in time for registration. And you're like, right. hey, where do I go for registration? And, in, and both Damon and I text back floor seven, but thankfully Damon had uh, updated that and said, it says six, but go to seven. Yeah, literally, literally. Right, right. Like, oh, you, you're... Because me, well, me and Jim, we were registering it like, go to six floor. I'm like, okay, here we are on the sixth floor. And you go, oh, you have to go up these steps. I'm like, well, that's seven. Like, like. But I, <laughs> I, I understand why they. Why I understand they the two. trafficked it the way they did yeah. because technically they thought there was going to be such a long queue line that it was going to the end of the queue line after the little you know staunches or whatever the roping was going to go down the steps. So that was the whole reason why they wanted people to go to sixth floor. So that way it consistently when it backed up. It was just pretty much doing that. But yeah, yeah. when you were like, ignore, just go to seven. So then I get to seven and it's like, I look around and the one, and I saw a volunteer and he saw me kind of looking and he said, do you need to check in? And I said, yes. And he said, okay, go over and see the man on the clipboard. He'll talk to you more. So I got passed off and then I walk up to him and he's like, are you pre-registered? I said, yes. He said, okay, this is the line you want. He's like, read this over on the clipboard, sign the thing. Like, so a lot of that was like pretty yeah. streamlined, but I agree it's like, the sixth floor thing is kind of questionable. Like the the sixth floor was probably needed for maybe an hour, a half an hour, if that. Maybe in like out of the Thursday whole weekend, Friday, maybe, yeah. When there's a lot of people coming in, right. So I'll talk about some of the positive things I've, I've liked so far. Um, so we can kind of joke about that. Um, I've been. Yes, there's a lot of classes, but I think one of the things I've enjoyed so far is that there is a wide range 
of classes that on things I'm interested in, things I'm not particularly interested in. Um, I got it over here, um, and things I've I've been kind of fond of and maybe wanted to do, like the the class I just left was something I've been interested in, but I've never really explored. Um, so it it it's good that there are different classes, and, and um, our instructor kind of explained like. This is something he really liked, so he wanted to share his information. He saw that there wasn't, it hadn't been um, a topic before, so he figured, let me bring it up and do a class. I was like, yeah, that's a great idea. Um, I've been really happy with, I like the location of the hotel. Being downtown, you've got a wealth of you know, options in regards to, you know, within walking distance of where to eat, what have you. Um, what else was there? Rooms are really nice. I mean, you've got a really nice room. Um, well, at least upgraded. But. I know. <laughs> but no, the, the West in this particular property is on the higher end. Yeah. It, it's a conference hotel. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's meant to be more uh, plush. It's not economy class. Yeah. But you probably also are paying the price yeah. that comes with this. Yeah. So that's one of the things, because like, uh, so yesterday um, when I wrapped up at the, the bathhouse and I was leaving, I was gonna take the shuttle back, I walk outside and I'm walking down the first block to go around the corner to the midpoint to wait. And this sedan pulls up and the window goes down and I hear, hey baby, you need a ride? <laughs> and I'm like, in that neighborhood? <laughs> I was like, I was like, okay. And I, in, like within a half a second, I was like, this person must know me because I sure as hell don't look like no streetwalker. Right <laughs> and you know, so uh, here come to find out it's a, it's a couple that I know from New York that don't live too far away from Erie. And um, they've been to drenched fur over the years. And so they were like, hey, what's going on? So I chat with them on the sidewalk for a brief moment. And they're like, well, what are you doing? I was like, I'm going back to the hotel. And they're like, do you want to ride? And I was like, if you're offering, sure. So I got in the back seat and like they drove me over, you know, here to the West End and we actually sat up front and annoyed the shit out of the valets because we sat there for like 15 minutes talking in the car and the valet comes over and he's like, no, 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 we're dropping him off but we're just chatting for a moment. So like, but like they asked me a ton of questions about like the event and stuff and finally I was like, the whole schedule and everything is in the app. And they're like, the app? And I was like, yeah, I was like, get the app. Like, and then it's in the platform, blah, blah, blah. So I started hooking them up with that. And they were like, well, are you going to dinner? And I was like, no. And they're like, oh, okay. And they're like, well, we're probably going to go over to Barrio Tacos. It's like a block and a half away. If you love Mexican, it's like the best thing ever. Every time we're in Cleveland, we get it. And they're like, just complimenting. And I was like, oh, all right. So I passed that nugget on actually in the lobby because someone was saying they were leaving to go eat. And I was like, oh, someone just literally told me if you're interested, you could probably look it up. You know, I can't speak to it. And uh, so it's it's interesting but i've heard people kind of on the opposite end about how the location parking like there's, there's a bunch a of things for people. right that has been kind of a, a complication i think for parking i think what it is is the event has been at the holiday inn where parking has been included and not a problem because it's in the suburbs it's not in the city right and it's a flat parking lot like it's just a yeah. big kind of area and the building isn't very tall so yeah. it's, people it's are kind of spread uh, out it, it must be people aren't used to going to events or staying at a hotel in a city. I well, just assume that I'm paying for I sort of parking. have a theory as to why we have an issue here at this Weston, though, because the cigar deck is technically in the garage parking lot on floor five. Yeah. So part of the parking lot is not being utilized. And I think that it, the parking garage is going to get renovated. Yeah. Because, no offense, the cigar deck area is okay for the most part until you look up. And then it gets real scary. So like that that ceiling shit or whatever it looks like it's falling down. I don't know what the story is. I'm like, okay, like as long as none of those tiles like or whatever it's made out of start like flaking on us, we'll kind of be okay. But that's what made me think like, oh, maybe that's why the chalk writing on the on the cinder block painted walls and all and the pillars isn't that big of a deal because they're about to come through and just like clean the whole yeah, thing out. There's construction codes. And all over the, the other part is that apparently normally there is valet and non-valet parking here at this hotel and this weekend it is only, only valet. valet. And that uh, I think really put a lot of like got in a lot of people's craw because they were like what like you have to pay more for valet and it's kind of like what gives about that. I, like, I can handle my own. Shit. Okay I maybe it's just me but $22 a day for parking is not that bad. Yeah. But that's me. I used to stopping in Chicago all the time yeah, right. to stay at a hotel, and my parking is like fifty-two dollars a day. So I'm okay with twenty-two. So like, I'm, wow. I'm, I'm kind of on a fence. Well, I'm not on a fence. I kind of 
made a point to, me and Jim made a decision, like we're just, just do the valet, do right. parking, because we're not gonna need the car to go anywhere except when we get home. So we're like, let's just get it to where it needs to be and pay leave for it. it and then leave it and right. then be done. Now, yes, I feel like if you don't wanna do valet for whatever reason, mm -hmm. that you should have an option. And again, call event planners, um, if you want to do it downtown, options. I think one of the things I saw was someone mentioned that there's a lot of parking downtown Cleveland that is not open on the weekends. And that's also... Yeah, there's also Right, so like lots. A, the Acom building that we're connected to, Acom building has a, a parking garage and it's not open on the weekend. I'll get it. We're going to take a commercial break. Well, <laughs> we think someone's at the door. Housekeeping. Oh, hi. She was sweet. <laughs> and you were fully clothed, so. <laughs> had you had you shown up in just a towel or just like a loose pair of shorts, you might have thought something else was going <laughs> so, on. So, so, the so side note, <laughs> last night, there's like seven of us all hanging out in here. And most of us are, you know, we're just lounging. We're just in our t-shirt or our underwear. Uh, I think Joe and Dane didn't have their underwear on. Whatever, we're just in here hanging out. We ordered pizza. Brady shows up and he's just sitting here lounging with us. Pizza guy shows up. We're like, Brady, get the door. And he's like, what, what, what's going on? And I'm like, you're the only one with clothes on. Oh, <laughs> so then he gets up. We're like, the money is on the table. Nice. He's standing the over the door. The only thing that would have been better is if he'd said the money was on the dresser. <laughs> <laughs> on the dresser. He's standing at the door and he's like, what table? Where's the money? We're like, no, it's over there. Oh, he's, he's running back and forth between oh, the rooms trying to figure so it out. so precious. That's so poor cool thing. So yeah. jacked into that all of a sudden. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I think there's there's pluses and minuses to things. I mean, they're, I think overall they're doing, I will say this, uh, and this is sort of a blanket statement that will probably be disagreeable to some people. They are doing the best they can. Yeah. And I think people will take beef with that and say, no, they can do better. And it's like, uh, you can do better when you know better. Yeah. And if you don't know better, then that's why we say you're doing the best that you can do. Is, is there a set the bar higher? Could they, could they, you know, be more attentive and plan? Absolutely. But here's the thing, like we're already here and it's rolling. Like, yeah. you know, I've always said this, it's like, it's like an amusement park ride. And once it starts on the track, it does not stop till it comes back. There's, so, um, uh, one thing that I want to, I, I'm going to agree with you and, and point out that we are in a new hotel, yeah. a whole new venue. It's not like we we just like moved across the street. No, we moved like neighborhoods. We yeah. went from uh, a Holiday Inn, which was a conference center that was in the suburbs, mm -hmm. to a downtown conference center, which is a different animal as far as hotels go. Correct. So... People have to take into consideration that aspect of it. Yeah, right. I, I think um, there's. It's very difficult. Anytime you change venue, like the, there's a lot of switch up. And like the one thing I have noticed though, that this event weekend does not have what usually happens, and maybe it's more like fair weekends. When you change venue, you have this whole what I call the butt sniffing year, which is everybody's got to check each other out. So like the committee and the attendees versus the hotel property staff, like nobody knows like who the what the where the when. And weirdly, this year that seems to not be a thing at all. Like the Weston staff has been like top notch, yeah. not a question, not a raised eyebrow. Like yeah. I don't feel like anyone's policing and running around and like you know kind of giving polite little things about like not doing this yeah. or whatever. There's but, not been any like. Yeah, app announcements like um, please no sex in the hallways or yeah. you know, I, no I, which is probably bathroom. complimentary also to the attendees that people are or at least this demographic group this weekend is minding itself to know when and where and what as opposed to I think other events we've been to where they like, have to make those announcements yeah. kind of be like you know I think I mentioned this before but it's probably been a long time but um, when they announced that this was going to be the hotel for this year I had come through and I checked it out myself and I even asked to meet the, uh, not the marketing, who was the event coordinators. Mm -hmm. I wanted to talk to that person 
so that she could show me around the different rooms in the venue so I could get a sense for the lighting and what I was going to be dealing with. And while she was showing me around, I had asked her, you know, are you prepared for this type of event? Do you know what's going to be happening? She's like, oh no, I'm more than familiar with your group. And I'm like, really? And she's like, oh yeah, I used to be the uh, event coordinator for IML for several years. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Ding, and I, ding, 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 and now we know the connection. Because <laughs> usually when you change venues and stuff, you're better off if you've got that little network thing, whatever, because it, it happened with Drunch Fur. The person we dealt with for event planning uh, and the, they call it the, the sales coordinator or whatever, that individual for us did have uh, a hotel property in Chicago during IML that they used to operate and has traveled the world and been to San Francisco and is gay. I mean, it's like, so like, and you know, that's why also the transgendered convention was happening at the hotel that we were at for the first few years. You know what I mean? So like when you have that, I don't want to say like side access or whatever, but it helps. So to know that the person here at this property has been acquainted with yeah. and familiar with IML, that probably like just kind of calms a lot yeah. of stuff down because there's, you don't have to have the discussions, right? You know about this, that, and the other thing. To to even tack on to that, um, when I first got here, the um, uh, event coordinator wasn't available, but the staffing coordinator was, and he said, "I know her itinerary, and I know what the event is. I can't give you specifics, but at least I can show you around." And I had asked him the same thing, and he's like, "Oh, I'm familiar with it," and I'm like, "Oh, okay, well that's good." And then as we're getting off the elevator and saying goodbye, he's like, I went to it last year. <laughs> and I was like, Aww. oh, okay, well, we'll be happy to see you again. <laughs> nice. Right, but that gets, but now it's complicated for him specifically. So this is something I think that doesn't get discussed, but uh, sort of came out of my event, which is a lot of businesses have a no fraternization policy. And what the, what that basically means is because you are the business contracted for services, you cannot participate in any shape or form during on hours or off hours with said entity. So uh, that's what sucks is to be like part of one of whatever the myriad of businesses that are involved, and then you can't technically, you know, it's it bas it's a job security issue if you yeah. were to be found out that you actually went to yeah. participate or whatever. Yeah. And and it's kind of cruddy only because you know if it's like it's something that you like to do or whatever you kind of can't. Yeah. So I, you know and and that's the thing that I think about now is oh like that's a bummer. Do you know what I mean? Like especially right. if if there's like well like at NAB the manager that was there. Uh, who kind of had like the, the pompadour like high style hair. The one, you know, where I, I don't know if you guys may, remember me making the joke about like their their Marriott jackets, like the cut is on the side. So it, like the flap was covering the butt. So when he walked, it was like boop, 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 as he walks across the yeah. lobby. And he was a really great guy to talk to. So he's, you know, he's gay and whatever. And he cracked me up because he kept saying, he's like, well, I'm on Grindr. And I, finally I was like, bro, you're going gonna, gonna to get a different app uh, for this weekend. I mean, not that I think he was interested, but it was one of those things. So he was very playful, like in his work capacity. But I think he even knew. Yep. Like that's, that's pretty like, much as far as it went. Right. Like as much as we read those online fantasies, and you know, maybe I've jerked off to this concept of like working in a hotel and hooking up with the gas and that kind of stuff. That's actually could be not a big loud. no no. Yeah. Right. Like if you do it, you have to recognize that your job could potentially be on the line. Mm -hmm. Because really what happens is you open the property up to liability. Yeah, right. If something were to happen and you, because then the question becomes, are you representing Why is that the business or are you representing? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of crazy. But anyways, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, hey, let's talk about Thursday night and the kickoff party. Oh. All right. So, uh, well, for those of you that are going to see, well, if you watch, I'm going to throw a, a video thing together like I did last year with a bunch of clips in it. Uh, I never made it to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because I ended up here at the hotel, got regged and checked in, was in the lobby for like over an hour, and was gonna take the shuttle bus, but uh, I was massively confused on whose room was what number and where and all that. <laughs> that was so you. I, yeah, it was totally me, because we there were different we were numbers going around and I couldn't follow the thread, so I ended up going to the one, the one with the highest number, thinking it was your room, and come to find out it's Chess and Tony's room, and they were actually there, so I start talking to them, and Tony leaves and goes to the flex party. And so Chess and I stay, and we literally talked, I was there for what, like five hours or whatever, 
chatting until like two in the morning. That's when they decided to go find the cigar deck and go smoke. Tony had already come back from the bathhouse and then you had pinged or whatever and it was like you could stop by you know for a short bit which i think you meant like less than a half an hour <laughs> and over three hours later i finally leave at 5 15 in the morning and then go back four blocks away to the garage to get my car to drive three miles to my friend's house where i'm staying so i could get an owl so um yeah so i never made it to the hall of fame as much as i wanted to go what happened was as Chess and i were talking and tony had left i was watching the clock and i knew that that hof closed at midnight yeah. and so I was like uh, and, and it's like it's 10 it's 10 30 and I lost track of time and I think it was 11 02 and it was just Chess and I at that point I was like fuck it like by the time I tried to get the shuttle or walk a couple of blocks literally over to that building I'm like it's for what like 20 minutes a half an hour I don't even know if y'all were yeah. still there so I, I'm bummed that I missed it because I really wanted to go because I haven't been to the Hall of Fame Museum and like probably over a decade or more but i appreciated that they did it for us mm -hmm. for us i thought as an event as large as we are it was nice to have that little hey we're gonna give you something to get the weekend started yeah um when we showed up we were immediately greeted with um cash bars and a large sound stage with people doing karaoke on it. Yeah. Um, I we were. But I changed my mind. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you in a second. We were um, immediately allowed to go right into the museum and check out the exhibits. And we, CLAW attendees, are the only people in this museum. So there's no children running around, there's no families running around. Um, it's. It was busy, like walking through the exhibits. There were lots of people in there, mm -hmm. but it wasn't so busy that you couldn't stand at an exhibit and appreciate in its entirety. You didn't feel rushed. Yeah. There weren't people, you know, pushing you along or trying to get around you, mm -hmm. stepping over people. Um, I've never been there, and I'm a big music lover, so I enjoyed myself there. Lots of great opportunities for photographs of just. Um, candid shots of people looking at things and um yeah D dane hung around and was at the um kickoff party down in the lobby and joe and i went through the exhibit and um yeah we went through the entire exhibit and i thought it was great yeah that that claude did that for us because we've never had anything like that before mm -hmm. it's always been you've got your education classes at the hotel on friday and saturdays You've got your trips to the bathhouse. You've got the trips to the bars. Um, and yeah, that's it. Yeah. Right. So this year when right. they added in, they've got this museum going on. I thought that was a nice touch. It was a nice touch. It was a good idea. It was a good option. Um, the karaoke was, was karaoke. Um, you know, yeah, good or bad. I appreciate the karaoke. I appreciated that it was there. Yeah. To like it. Yeah. Um, I wanted to do something, but I literally looked at the list and I was like, well, I know a few things. And actually, there was someone doing um, a song that I was literally about to do, and I was like, oh, she just got up and started singing, and I was like, crap. So I won't, that just, that's, you know, being respectful. Like, you don't want to hear the same song 20 times. Um, but it was a really, I had never, also had never been to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, so I was really glad that I got a chance to see it. Um, Jim, I think, has been before, um, but it was, they, I mean, like you said, it was the entire place pretty much was open for us. Um, you got to do the tour. They, they had down in the lower level, they had the brochures that kind of gave the guided quote unquote tour of it. And um, it was just nice to kind of walk around and then seeing people. Because that was the thing I liked most about it was that it was early enough that, yes, you had a lot of people there, but it, there weren't, it wasn't the entire, like, 200, 2,600 people. Right. So um, you had a chance to like see people. Uh, I met a few people that I've been, you know, hadn't seen in a while, like uh, my friend Nick uh, Puff Baron, um, who lives in Cincinnati but lives in uh, a good distance away. Um, so we've never actually gotten to hang out, and it was good to see him. For example. Yeah. Cool. Um, so yeah, that was basically like my Friday night. Like I said, I arrived. Hung out, met a bunch of people, chatted with a bunch of people, ended up 
uh, talking uh, with Chess and Tony for a bit, and then like talk more with Chess. But that's what Chess and I do. Like we're very, I don't know how else to say it. We're very cerebral. Like we yeah. just get into having intellectual talks about like all sorts of various things between the two of us. And like Tony later said to me, um, if Tony, if you listen to this, I'm not trying to spill any tea, but he said that's kind of why he left because he realized like we were having a, an in depth conversation, and he felt that I had been talking around some stuff because he was there and I was like no it's not because you were there that's just the way I am like, <laughs> if, you, if you pay attention to verbal patterns I, when I went to therapy in college I was actually told you talk in circles but the thing that the therapist at the time said was amazing is I talk in circles and eventually I get back around to the original thing and and like kind of go through whatever that is so <laughs> to me it's the Olympic rings like I just kind of you know and I kind of like you know um, which I thought was interesting and so I told Tony I was like no I was like the fact that you were there wasn't that although I said I did talk about some very personal stuff with Chess during Tony's absence because Tony was gone and Chess kind of probed and was like, yeah. you know, since since you since you skimmed <laughs> that he called it out and he was like, but we're friends that way, you know. It's yeah. kind of like, like it was kind of he didn't say these things, but it was like, here's your opportunity. Like if you want to open up and have this discussion, we can have it right now or whatever. And I think that's what really good friends do for each other is you know let them know. Like now's the time if you want to like you know have this discussion with me or not with me or whatever. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, after you had left, because um, this is your first time ever interacting with Burlick in person, right? To that level. To that level. I met Burlick last year when I met Dozer because uh, when I met them was at the very end of the Puppy Mosh last year. I showed up yeah. in like the last yeah. three minutes. And so you were like, oh, this is And then we went to breakfast. Right, right. And, and then we went out to Denny. So it was like, like, so that all was like very uh, kind of superficial and like, you know, just this big yeah. social or whatever. You are like, so, oh yeah, we've met. Right. And so, uh, like, you know, my intention was really not to stay that long. But again, like, I, like the, the issue was, and so you didn't know this, I was in that mode. Like I was in Gary talking, like working through well, processing I, stuff. I, I told so when them I that. came in... Like, I, you know, we ended up having that really great, like, poly relationship, you know, discussion thing. And there was a part of me the whole time we were talking, I was like, God, this is like a fucking episode of the show, but I'm just not recording it. Like, <laughs> you know, and it's not that it has to be, but, you know, we, and what I noticed was like, so you're kind of like sitting there, whatever, Chester, and, you know, uh, Joe and uh, Dane are both on the bed, and it's like, and they keep changing their positions, but for quite a while, they were both like, really invested, you know what I mean? Like facing towards us and, and talking and that. And then towards the end, at the end of the three hours, they were kind of like, they, they were laying on their back and like, you know, and it's like, and really yeah. like, it's kind of like he's under the covers and he's kind of like, you know, he's yelling at Dane to move because he wants to stretch and just fall asleep. And, and both of them were basically nodding off and I was kind of like, yeah. And then you really started to super fade. Like, like most people kind of fade when they get tired. And I was watching you and it was like one, two, three like I could just see you kind of like drop your energy and everything <laughs> and you were like and it was so funny because you said all right you need to go but one more thing like it was a question or something and I thought <laughs> you're doing this to yourself like don't come back at me if we, we spend another 20 minutes or whatever on I know something. I know so yeah when I finally left I was like oh my god it is 5 15 in the motherfucking morning because you said something at four o'clock you were like oh my god it's four o'clock I was like <laughs> I was like Gary it's four o'clock just giving you a heads up that you gotta go soon, but but to be fair, and you probably know me well enough that you could be what pe other people would think is rude or ignorant. You could actually be abrupt and be like, "This is great. We need to right. stop. I know that. We need now. to leave. We're I, going to bed." Like before, uh, before you were even coming up, I I asked uh, Joe and Dane, "Do you care if Gary comes up?" And they're like, "No, it's okay." And I'm like, "Just so you know." If he comes up here and Gary gets on a roll, we're going to be here all night chit-chatting. Is that all right? And they're both, no, that's cool. I don't mind. You know, that, that actually sounds good just to decompress from the day. Okay. So when you're up here. So then I leave. Yeah. When you Bath leave, <laughs> um, Joe was like, I really liked it. I really enjoyed that talking. You know, we had a really good conversation. That was great. But my God, I can't believe we've been here this long. And I'm like. Yeah, that's the thing with Gary is once you get him on something, you've got to cut him off. I, I lose track of time. Like, yeah. time, time is of no consequence to me unless I get tired. And that's part of the problem is, like, as Brandon, uh, one of my hosts, pointed out to me because well, I got in. So I left here at 515. 
So I have to walk, that was the first night, so I have to walk four blocks back over to the garage, finally get there, get in the car, and then I'm driving home, and I am hungry as a motherfucker, because I've been eating all day long, and I'm like, I need to eat something. And I'm on the way, and they live out on the west side of uh, Cleveland, nothing is open at that hour. Yeah, literally. not even drive throughs So I, right, and so I'm driving. Well, no, there was a McDonald's that was lit, and so I went through the drive through I drive up to the drive through The automated message informs me that the store is closed and to come back later. Oh, Jesus. Or find another location. Right, and I was like, I fucking hate McDonald's as it is, and the only reason I pulled in, bitch, is because your light was on. So I was like, all right, fine, fuck you. So I, like, drive away, and I'm getting closer to their house, and there's a Burger King. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what time is it? And by this time... It was 5.49. <laughs> no, breakfast. <laughs> I pull into the parking lot. I wait 11 motherfucking minutes for the light to turn on at 6 a.m. And I got myself a croissant sandwich and tots and orange juice and had breakfast. Totally not yes. the shit I'm supposed to be eating or drinking. Went and then went to their house, parked in front of their house on the street, ate my breakfast in the car because I didn't want to take it in the house finished it and then walked into the house and they have a security system so it's coded so I like come in at what 6.15 in the morning like you know roll into their house everybody's supposed to be in bed asleep come to find out my host had just woken up and they heard the door and stuff when I come in because it chirps and beeps and stuff yeah so I didn't get to bed till like 7 or what or 7.30 because then I get downstairs and I'm wound like I just ate and I was like, so I'm unpacking, you know, some stuff, and it's like I'm trying to think ahead, like, lay it. What are the clothes I'm wearing tomorrow? What are the clothes I'm wearing on Saturday? Because time is of the essence. Like, it's just going to go so fast. Yeah. And so I was planning all of that out. Um, I just realized I didn't bring my clothes out. I have my sweatshirt and my T-shirt, and I don't put it in the house. <laughs> like, I was intentionally going to bring it uh, for recording, but not that it matters. See, for an event like this, we need to get some of the, um, like, tape and put, like, a ball gag in the bear's mouth just to wear for the weekend. <laughs> oh, my God, that would be hysterical. Nice. Well, we could probably go back to our design artist and see if he could do some mods. Because <laughs> that would be funny if we could get a ball gag uh, oh. bear. Yeah, although that does that would that kind of look weird. That, 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 that being comes right, out loud. But, right, I was going to say, that's, that, that's like, comes not the it's not the antithesis. What's the opposite? No, antithesis. Is it, yeah, yeah. Of the concept of a podcast yeah. is, like, no, we've been gagged. Um... So, no, it was a, uh, yeah, so I turned around and I, so, I, and, and then I slept, I got a nap for about four and a half hours, then got up and, sh you know, shower, held the whole bit, and then, you know, get dressed, and then I'm thinking ahead, and that's the only downside of what I've been doing. I get it why people want to be in the host hotel, but it's like, I'm saving a lot of money by not yeah. being yes. in a hotel room and or sharing it with people, even if I was sharing, I don't know who I'd be sharing with, just to be fair. Uh, for those that don't know, um, I've considered myself leather adjacent for a very long time, and so this is the second leather run I've ever been to. The first one was in uh, Minneapolis when I was dating David, and so this one, I actually paid for the full package. Last year, I was just here on the day pass thing. So it's like, it's sort of like baby steps, whether or not, you know, I might go to the point yeah. of getting a room, but because... I can live, not live, but sleep in a house That's three not miles what I away. You were gonna say about baby steps. I thought you were gonna be like baby steps into getting into kink, and I'm like, I've got my floggers right over no, there. That's, <laughs> that's a whole other discussion. Okay, okay, um, yeah. But just in terms of the weekend, it's like, you know, it, it is a bit of a pain in the ass, and it really does require the six piece, because I'm like, that's why I've had that bag every day. Like yesterday, I had a towel and my swimsuit, and that other shit that I never end up using or needing. You know, so my gym bag, quote unquote, has that stuff. Yeah. And then like the backpack has been in my car every day. Like, you know, I have like security uh, tinting and stuff. So, and nobody can really see it in there, but I've had it there every day just in case because I wanted to be prepared in case something happens. And right. the two of you were like, let's do it now. And I'd be like, uh, okay, well I gotta go run to the car. And that's what happened today. We did two sessions and I'm like, I'm not carrying this motherfucker 40 pound pack back everywhere. Yeah. So that's why I was like, are you going to be in your room as soon as the session ends at one so I can drop my gym bag? Because no offense, I don't want to truck it all the way to the parking garage, get the backpack and bring all of it back. Yeah. Like, um, nice. So for me, it's been it's been a lot of off-site, on-site, like kind yeah. of running around stuff. But it's, it's worked out uh, pretty good. I think overall, this weekend has been, you know, quite the success. I, I think the issues are minimal and that's really hard yeah. because when you have when you have 
a minor amount of issues, they get magnified because they stand out so much about, like, I mean, in my own event, the transportation issue that I had at mine, like, you know, was something unexpected that happens at the last second and it's like, we've just got to deal with it no matter what. And so uh, the two things that, the two things that were kind of uh, misses for us or hits that we took was both related to transportation and in a way it's kind of like some of it's out of my control and, despite all the planning and, that I tried yeah, to do. And I mine. think for this event, the the goal would be, the, not the goal, but the option, if the option becomes available that you can do more things at the hotel, do more things at the hotel. I know it sounds weird, but like everything should be close at hand because the sooner you break things up and you put things further away, the bitchiness is going to happen. You know, oh, I have to go this far to go to here, or oh, I have to go over there. Right. Um, you know, the and, and as we learned, like we discussed briefly in the event planners meeting, one of the golden rules is you cannot make everybody happy. Yeah. Be be aware. You will always be criticized no matter what you do. So like my event, we used to have a bar night. Well, the bar night attendance was going down, and I was like, I'm spending money for a freaking bus for nothing. Like, not nothing, but like, it just wasn't being effective. So we internally discussed it, and we turned it into an in-house DJ dance in the ballroom. That's been very popular. Do you know what I get in my feedback criticism? No oh, one missed the bar night. Why isn't there a bar night? Why are we going to the bar? Why don't we get to go like interact with the, with the locals? Y'all can go interact with the locals. We give you directions. Like, we tell you how to get to the damn this bar. This like, little you know. app called Lyft. Uber. <laughs> Uber. Uber. Uh, Uber. Yeah, I mean, it's like, you can go do that. If yeah. you wanted to be officially a part of the thing, like, then one, you should probably join the committee, and then also learn all the background nuances about how the decisions are made, and then you might also come to the same conclusion about why we did what we did. Exactly. But, so, I'm going to talk about one little thing, because it's here in my pocket. So uh, I got a little gift. Um, well, you both got gifts this weekend. Uh, well, Gary gave me a little gift, since we've been spilling some tea. There's the no. Kermit the Frog, um, sipping tea. We had actually talked about it, I think, on a podcast or something. You posted on Facebook. Oh, that's right. You yeah. found someone had a picture, I think, and they posted on Facebook of just the, the enameled pin. And you were like, I think you said something in the effect of, I must have this pin or yes. something like that. Yeah. So, but it wasn't, I don't think it was a link to buy. It was just an image. Like someone had posted it and thought it was hysterical that someone made the Kermit sipping tea meme, quote unquote, yeah. into a pin. So I jumped online immediately and did a search and lo and behold found an Etsy store that was selling them. And so, um, you know, and I, so I told Tess about it. He thought it was awesome. And I told him, I said, this isn't, I'm not to, diminish it it wasn't that expensive like <laughs> bitch if it was thirty dollars i would have been like uh that might be a birthday gift <laughs> or a christmas gift but like you ain't getting it right away so no and, and i said to him i was like you know oh i'm gonna see you at claw like and because it's a leather event and pins are a thing in the leather community i thought it was yeah yeah it'll be on my breast yeah soon. so um <laughs> yeah and then for those that are aware of chester's marker uh, situation over time. Okay, so that one right there actually was given to him at Drench Fur, but he didn't know it was for me. It was just anonymously in his room. Nice. Yes. So here's here's the deal. Chester's been looking for a marker that does not fade away per se, uh, wash away or wash away. So that one is actually considered a paint marker, which is meant to be used on like rubber. So uh, effectively, it's pretty much supposed to be damn near permanent. Like, it doesn't really do anything. Oh, it isn't? No. Well, oh, it's, it's, it's because the, it mixes with the oil and the skin. Oh. Yeah. So there's that, but then a, a weird sidebar <laughs> story is that my father has some of those old school metal markers that, that like, yeah. you can get high off of. <laughs> and so he had a bunch of They're them. They're big, fat, right. silver, and kind of gold Right, with a black cap or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, exactly. they stink to fucking high heaven. Yes. Like, if you've ever used one in teaching They're or training industrial. or whatever, right, like, you know, you use it for, like, a half-hour session, and everybody can smell the shit, like, for, you know, it's 200 feet fuck. around the room <laughs> all day long. Yeah. So, anyways, he had a bunch of them, and I asked Dad, I said, about where he got them. He's like, oh, I've had them forever. And he said, why? And he said, do you need one? And I said, well, I have a friend that's been looking for a good permanent marker. I don't say what it's for. <laughs> and so he's like, oh, well, here, you know, take this one. So I gave it to you at... Uh, uh, 
maybe at NAB. Then at Drench Fur, he gets that one. And then just this past week, my father sees me again, and he's like, oh, I found two more of those, two more of those markers you gave to your friend. <laughs> he comes up to me so... out of nowhere, and he's like, here, these are from my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Not that, not that, damn things. No, not that my dad's approved by any means. I mean, you know, I, actually, if I was to tell him what they were for, he'd probably be like, "Well, oh, that's interesting." <laughs> you know, but um, yeah. So there's been there's been little uh, gift things. Like I gave something to Chess because he made a passing comment once. For those of you that ever bought Crown Royal, when you get it, it comes in a velvet bag or a soft like uh, bag. The Crown Royal Maple comes in a brown bag. Normal Crown Royal comes in a purple, purple bag, and Crown Royal Black comes in a black bag. Right. Well, Chelsea made a comment about how great a bag it would be to, like, you know, put some toys in, or, like Tony said, it would be a great, like, a uh, dye bag if you could do, you know, uh, games and that. Well, I actually took the time, I don't know if it was, like, maybe two winters ago, while I was watching something on, like, binge-watching Netflix, I literally took a seat ripper and took the entire Crown Royal embroidery off that gets stitched on the outside of it. So it has no branding at all. It is literally just a the bag. round, like, brown bag with, like, some gold accent. Nice. I've had it forever. I've never used it. And I found it recently, like, in a drawer, and I was like, this is the dumbest thing. Like, you make something or you do something, and then you never use it. And I was like, I know who I can pass this off to that might actually be of nice. interest. He knew right away, like, I tossed it to him, and he was like, he looks at it for just a second, and he's like, oh, my God, he's like, that's so cool. So then... Nice. I did. So we had a discussion. I briefly explained to Tony because I think he might have been like, "That looks odd. Like it's way too big for a cock sock." You know, like, <laughs> you know, or even certain persons that we know that have you know saline injected nuts. Like even then, it might still be a little too big. So yeah, it was a, uh, it was kind of comical. But like uh, briefly, because we need to get close to wrapping up. Uh, so this is the first run and I don't know how long be it bare or leather that had a bathhouse included as a part of the, the scheduling. Interestingly there were there's two days. Well uh, when I went to hibernation which was now like 10 years ago uh, I don't remember if there was a bathhouse at that time and if oh. it was I don't know if it was included. I know that I just didn't do it. Well there's specific also, reasons why. I forgot I was vending the one time I went so that's why I probably didn't go. But uh, not since uh, 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 the Bear camp in, in uh, Columbus has yeah. been one. So, for me, it was interesting to, to go back to a bathhouse, having not been to one actually personally outside of this stuff in a long time, and to be at Flex in Cleveland, which I haven't been to in a long time, uh, and it being a leather event. But the yesterday's was a bear <laughs> yeah. pool party, naked bear pool party, and then today's is a, a cake Oink. pig, you know, um, center focus one, and what we had. I had been told was rumor was that both pool parties we were only going to have access to the pool in the atrium yeah and that it was going to kind of be cordoned off or something so when we show up I'm fully expecting like you know because we didn't have to pay extra it was totally included yeah so we're not paying you know 15 25 we didn't even pay a membership fee yeah. which someone had made mention that like we were gonna have to pay like a, a minimal ten dollar membership fee or something I was expecting that right and we paid nothing so we just get in and we show them you know give them our ID fill up the little waiver form and then we get the key for the lockers and we go yeah. in well then I realized there's no barriers and there's no wristband there's nobody standing watching or anything so we had full access to the whole property and in about 15 to 20 minutes, because I was part of the first group that was there, I noticed some of the people were like, and hey, I'm going to go wander. <laughs> so they started checking things out. And like the one person uh, I was chatting with, I was like, I think I'm going to go take a walk around. Because not that it got boring, but it was kind of like we, more buses. Sitting in a pool. Well, more buses walk, had to yeah. show up. And like David, I don't think was, no, David was there, but Ray wasn't there yet. It was the co-host. And like you didn't yeah. know what the plans were. And uh, so it was just kind of like, eh. So we decided to go walk around, and uh, and it's funny because I was like, and it's almost like muscle memory. Like I'm walking around, I'm like, oh, that's right. So this is the open play space. There's the stalls. There's the various slings. There's the I love this adult jungle gym <laughs> uh, area, you know. And then there's the the you know smaller you know private rooms, and then the upper deck beach, which yeah. it was too cold out really to be out there. You know, the big movie theater room, the rec room, you know, just the whole. Yeah kind of deal so I was like yep I've done laps in this building a couple of times like and it's all like I was having a Dion moment um, yeah. so yeah when I got there or you know 
you and I hung out in the pool for a little bit. I was like, this fucking pool is cold. I'm getting over to the hot tub. Right. The hot tub was fucking hot. Right. I told you, for as cold as the pool was, it wasn't frigid, but it was very cool. Yeah. The hot tub was hot. It was like, probably 103, 104 degrees. Oh, even more. Because I like because that's about the temperature range that I kind of like. Yeah. Is you like, got in it. Was, you it's were about sweating. 100 to 103. And that one I was going to say was probably like 106 to 108, maybe. I think that's hot. a little. Yeah, I think it might be raining uh, at that point. Well, uh, anyway. But anyway, it was hot. definitely hot. Um, I just want to throw this was. out. This. It was hot more than one way. <laughs> I want to throw this out there. Um, you know how earlier I was talking, throwing some shade about some people wanting to play with me, right? Oh, right. This is, this is pre recording of the show. Just so everybody knows. So yesterday, one <laughs> for those that can't see the video, we're also doing is a back uh, behind the scenes. David just pulled a sip and tea and uh, pin out. Sip you know? that tea because yeah. I'm about to spill it. Yeah. So this one of those certain people, and you'll know which one I'm talking about. Okay. He was there, and we're standing there chatting. And as far as I know, he wants time to play with me, and I'm like, okay. "Hey, I'm gonna go walk around. Do you want to come with?" And he's like, um, no, that's okay. So this is my this is my thing about this. You are in, no offense, you are in a business of sex. Like that's what that business I is am there for. Inviting you can you tell along like you can talk me. all you want about the gym. Yes, there is a very nice gym there. You can actually physically work out, you know, buff that body up, girl. Here's the thing. There's a pool, there's a hot tub, there are many places to fuck and suck. So if a person says to another person in an environment that is meant to be about sexual release, I'm gonna go take a walk, would you like to go with me? It's kind of like Hell buying fuck, you a yeah. shot at the bar <laughs> and putting their hand on like your thigh. It's kind of like, here's your first step of lead and if you don't follow, then you don't follow. Yeah. So but I will I will give I will say a couple of things. There's 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 choices. 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 Is the, is the thank, you, thank you, thank you, Tatiana. But there's also the the mis. What will we talk about it in our bathhouse? There's a misconception, misperception about what go, what's going on. Yes, you know what's going on, and maybe you don't necessarily want to do it. Maybe you're afraid of what people are going to think. Oh, we're going out. I know. I know. I know. I know. Yeah. So you, yeah. <laughs> I know. Trust me. It it is perfectly fine for like plenty of things you know you know what's gonna happen and you know but there are plenty of guys there but there's still that whole like personal perception that you're gonna have like someone's gonna see me and what they're gonna do or what they're gonna think and that's very true for a lot of our younger age generation some of us are, have grown up and got like I don't fuck, fucking care anymore well, I think we, I will say this for the three of us collectively here, and maybe for some of our audience, we kind of probably came up and lived by the code of what happens at X stays at X. You know, kind of like the marketing slogan, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. You know, that's been rumored and said for so many times, like what happens at bear camp stays at bear camp. I mean, everyone's always like, you know, kind of co opt with that. And I feel that way about a bathhouse. It's kind of like, like, if you've got issues about being at the bathhouse, you should not have gone to begin yeah. with because it's kind of an understood, unspoken rule. You walk through those doors, and even though you are not anonymous because you can fully see everybody and know who's there, could be the goddamn mayor of the city for all we know, you know, that, that shows up. It's that's just kind of like nobody says anything. Like, no one takes it off property and tells yeah. tales of this, that, and the other thing. Sure. Someone did approach me last night, though. Uh, when I was leaving the, the pup mosh, I was having a conversation with someone and they leaned in and they said, so you had fun at the, at the spa or something like that. And I kind of looked at them and they were, they was like, it was just nice to see you, you know, interacting or something like that. And I knew exactly what they were talking about. And I was like, I wanted so badly to like, just start getting shade with them and calling them out. Cause they didn't say anything, but it's like, Really, in this environment right now, we're surrounded by like a dozen people. Like, granted, we're probably the only two that can hear this conversation or are paying attention, but still, it's right. like, you could have sent that to me because we're good friends. It's like, you could have sent that to me in a text and said something as opposed to just Spilling kind of there. phrasing it yeah. that way. So that's one of those things. And I was like, yeah. and I'm not mad at them. I don't think I need to really say anything to them. It was yeah. just this moment where I thought, this is the difference between the two of us as people. I would have like sent it as a private message as opposed to saying something in a public venue with right. people around, I've, you know. 
because I, I think what happened for perhaps the two of you and other people that know me, nobody has seen me in that capacity ever before. I will own, I haven't been to a bathhouse in a long time and I'm not a public person. I'm more like kind of one-on-one -on -one and private. So to be in the bathhouse and then to go do things and kind of, you know, this is gonna be an awful reference and you can totally call me out for it. Like if Stella got her groove back, that's what happened. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, so. I love that movie. <laughs> so, you know, my thing was like, you know, and it was kind of like, that was kind of why I was in good spirits for quite a while yesterday. Cause I was like, oh, like, I mean, you know, I'll talk very briefly about this for some people who are immediately around and kind of know, like, I mean, this was part of the big conversation was, you know, in Chess and Tony's room is the first thing that Tony or Chess said is I walk in and he's looking at me. It's not even maybe, I think, 90 seconds. And he goes, you've lost a whole bunch of weight. And I was like, well, yeah, you know, and I kind of was just kind of downplaying. And he's like, no, no, you've lost a lot of weight. He's like, since I saw you at NAB. And I was like, eh. I don't know about NAV. I'm like, yeah, but since New That's Year's, like, I've been doing stuff like very specifically with a doctor protocol, you know, thing. And so that is part of the thing about the bathhouse. It was very different for me this time because uh, I've been very body self-conscious and like uncomfortable about things. And because I'm wearing smaller clothes and like that kind of sure. thing, being in the bathhouse and having a regular towel. Now, I don't know if the blue ones are really regular. I think yeah. the blue ones are the big boy towels. <laughs> but the fact that I have a big boy towel and it fits all the way around yeah. was a thing for me. So it was kind of like, and notably, people liked me and appreciated like, you know, <laughs> that they found me sexy and consequently I had fun. And it was like, so that was like big ego boosting and stuff. Like, oh. Yeah, big surprise. So, <laughs> you've kind of liked what you've seen for years. So, um, you haven't been shy about that. So I'm not really spilling any tea. I'm just like, meh. You know, um, the, the, overall, I think that's one of the good, that's, well, we're going back into the bathhouse topic, but one of the things I like is like, you get a lot of body, body positivity just based solely on someone, you know, giving you a compliment or giving you a touch. And, uh, right, and notably, because it was a bear pool bear, party, yeah. I think, a lot of people yesterday mm -hmm. shed a lot of self-consciousness about being in that environment and being naked. I will own that I reached out, um, and I don't think this is really saying much out to us, and I said, are you wearing a swimsuit at the naked pool party? And he, uh, his reply was something like, yeah, about that, dot, dot, dot. And, I, and I, so I replied and I said, I'm gonna take a swimsuit and I think I'm gonna start in one and then maybe you know, take it off at a certain point to just get a temperature or feel for things. I never even bothered with the swimsuit. I know that you had the I had on my singlet or, or yeah, my shorts that have a harness right. attached to it. I started out with that, and then eventually I took it off because I felt I felt odd being in it. Well, right. So when I came in, like most everybody was just going all natural, yeah. and my thing was I was like, you know what, like just get over it. Like, yeah, you're like, you know, bigger and, you know, chunky and bumpy or whatever. Like you have these things about your body you're not confident about. And being a person that I will own, that I'm a grower. Like, so that's, but then it was this thing where I was looking around and I was kind of like, there's a lot of big boys here and a lot of us have very similar physical like qualities. Yeah. And so you just kind of, I don't know, for me, it was just like, I, I'm just going to throw that shit away. And I didn't wear that have because I have body issue, body image issues. I've been to a bathhouse before and I never had a problem taking my clothes off. Even now, it wasn't, I didn't go there thinking I'm going to wear this because of that. I wore it because it's a piece of kink gear. Yeah. My shorts have a very noticeable zipper in the back. Not that I'd be doing that, but it's there. Mm -hmm. My front is a cod piece that's removable. I wanted to make sure that I was, I still was in this image of me being into kink. Mm. Yeah. And, and so for me, the thing about the bathhouse was yesterday, if you wanted to walk around and stuff, once we figure, all figured out like, oh, you, whole place is open kids, yeah. like, you know, the playground is there. Once that happened, I think yesterday was really good for the guys because there was a lot of us like someone had asked me and I was like, I see there's over a hundred people that were there yeah. and that I said, you know, that were there for that event. So yeah, there were locals and there was, you know, some skinny boys and muscle and in between and, that. and there were lots but, of puppies, but right. But I think the bears who maybe the demographic I'm focusing on that are self-conscious about their body, 
they were okay with walking around and being seen, and they didn't have to stay like in one yeah. place because that's kind of where everybody was, and that's the only safe space like for them. They could actually go around the whole thing. Like I, that was the part I loved the most was seeing bigger guys be appreciated and like really appreciated. Do you know what I mean? And like you know, and and yeah. that's the whole thing about a bathhouse. Like part of it is like it is public sex and it is open and people can see you know and that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. And I, that for me was probably one of the best parts of that experience like yeah it's great to see you guys and have camaraderie and chit chat and all that yeah. but at the same time i was like look at all the people just like really enjoying each other and not you know and kind of this like getting their group on right yeah. yeah so um really quick and it didn't even occur to me until you talked about how somebody came up to you and made those comments right. about being at the bathhouse it didn't occur to me that somebody did the same thing to me last night like when they said it like we had a very different reaction okay. to the same situation. All right. Somebody at the puppy mosh came up to me and said something to me. Oh, so I, I understand you know so-and-so. And I'm like, well, yeah, I've known him for a while. Why? Oh, well, I didn't actually see your face, but I saw what you were doing to him. And it was pretty public. And I was like, yeah, well, that's me. I like exhibitionism. And Right. voyeurism right and they're like oh okay i just didn't know you knew that guy Carl. yeah okay Carl. My, <laughs> my, my point is is we had a very different reaction to it the person said this right and it just kind of like went in one ear out the other uh, i didn't give any more thought to it mm. i think damon and i are kind of on the same track because i'm like why are you flinging shit girl I'm like, right. like what's, <laughs> what's that about like the way that you, if you're, I don't know if you're paraphrasing, but if you're kind of, yeah, I'm paraphrasing. If you're, if you're getting to like direct quoting, like kind of like their tone and what they were saying, I would, I wouldn't have let it go out the other ear. I would have been like, all right, listen, Judy, I'm gonna call you up on the shade that you're like dishing because I ain't got time for this. I think it was more that he was jealous that I was playing with this particular person. That's fine. I, I don't care what their emotional motivation is. My issue is. Why are you doing, like, why are you having this discussion with me in public like it's a thing because, like, first of all, none of your business. And second of all, like, what, what's going on with this? Like, this is this is all about you. Yeah. And you, hand, right, you handle it very differently. Because like, you, you're kind of like, I don't give a shit, which is actually the better way to do it because I probably would have come from a place of anger and you're coming from a place of I don't give no fucks. Like, it, it was more like, yeah, I was playing around with them. Yeah. It was odd. I liked it. You know, yeah, why? Like, Did you enjoy the show? Because I hope you did. Because yeah. that's kind of the point. Now see, right. I was just saying, now, if you wanted to be a sarcastic bitch about it, you could have been like, well, you could have had some too, but you have to pay. Uh -huh. <laughs> It'd be like, you know. Because yeah. uh, when I initially played with the guy, we were in a somewhat very secluded place. But when it was my turn to play with him, mm -hmm. I made sure we went to a more open and well-lit area. Oh, Okay. Well, and see, this is the Sorry. thing is, the person that made the comment to me, I don't know when they saw me. Mm. I will own this, there was more than one, like, <laughs> encounter yesterday, so I don't know which one they saw or when, because I get tunnel vision when I'm kind of in and doing things. Like, even though it's in a public area or in a group aspect, I kind of, like, I, I don't know about other people, I guess we haven't really discussed it in our LTS or LTAK stuff. I focus on the individual that I'm with I'm I may not have that capacity in a group to yeah. like you know take in all the things I'm kind of more like one-on-one -on -one. so you know if there's like six people it's most likely pairs yeah you know, you know what I mean it's kind of like I'm just focusing on the one you know and that's just the way it is so so I think for to go back and call um I think tonight there's there's a puppy leashed thing yes which I'm not quite sure how that's going to go down but it sounds interesting Apparently, if you are a puppy, okay. the only way that you can actually be in the space and interact with people is you have to be leashed with a handler. If Does it have to be your handler? I don't believe so. No, that's okay. not exactly clear. Yeah, that seems but like when, when you read the description, it says, don't worry, there will be puppies up for adoption. Oh, that's cute. 
Anything. I think it's going to be like a fundraiser thing that if you're a puppy and you want to be involved, okay. you have to go into a kennel and wait for somebody to adopt you. Right. So it, it, it sounds interesting. I'm looking forward to what it's going to be like. Yeah, today's kind of interesting because we have this kind of lull uh, opportunity. Most everyone I know is kind of open in yeah. the afternoon into yeah. the yeah. evening. Everybody I know so, has got like, time open I'm, right now. Right, like, I mean, well, and because my window was open, someone talked to me about, you know, spending some time together, and I was like, well, here's, like, and that's why when we were having this chat discussion about are we recording on Saturday, we're recording on Sunday, so finally I was kind of like, let's record now. Well, I was like, y'all just need to kind of decide where we're going with this because of that. Um, I do want to jump on the puppy thing real quick. Last night was the puppy mosh. Um, we shot some video, you and I, Chester, and we uh, chatted a bit. Um, puppies. It went, it went really, really well, I think, <laughs> overall as an activity. There was some kind of, like, I don't know, questionable things about for me, it was about personalities, about how some people handle certain things. Um, <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, but I thought that it was overall really well. At the very end, what you don't know about and you missed is because uh, I think both of you had left. Uh, I was talking to Dr. George. So he's there, and we have that awkward conversation, right? Because Damon's like talking to him, and I know exactly who he is. I've known who he is for a couple of years, and because he was here last year, I already had seen him in his... Yeah. Uh, you know his uh, pop identity and all that kind of stuff. So it's like, yeah, I, I know who G Pup is, and so he went to introduce, and I was like, yeah. So I'm like, I already know who you are, Doctor George. And he was like, do I know you? And I was like, nope, you don't know me at all. But I've known about you for a while, and that, and understandably, it kind of put him on defense for a moment because he's like, oh, okay. So we have this conversation. Even though you guys were talking for like a good half hour before. No, no. No, he was mostly talking to Damon. He talked to I was just standing there. Oh, I was like, I was like a wall. Like there was like there was nothing out of me. I was just purely sort of listening, yeah. observing, and paying attention. He talked to, to me the crowd. for like five, ten, like ten, fifteen minutes about like because I you know recognized him from um, online, yeah, Facebook or whatever, and mm -hmm. talked about that. And then he had you know we were friends on Facebook, and then he was like, let me take a picture, and I was like, okay, so he took the picture, and then he went to, I think, I, yeah, I, I gestured to Gary because I knew that there was that face or comes out loud potential connection. So was, right. let's get that going. So we, right. So we, so I, you know, explained that I'm one of the co-hosts with you guys, you know, for comes out loud and stuff. And I said, the way I know of you is because there used to be a podcast in Australia called bears in the city that is no longer running. And I said, and I think that that's how I first learned of you. I said, plus you do the healthy bear blog, uh, stuff and that. And so he was like, Oh, so we have been in this engrossing conversation uh, and that's kind of like you guys said goodbye and left or whatever because you said you were going to go to the cigar deck and that's when you're taking off to your rooms uh and i was like oh all right so we talked more and so here's the thing i'm super excited about dr george wants to come on as a guest talk about uh he you know medical stuff um that type of thing i told because he asked the question he's like why haven't you had me on like you know and stuff and i said I said, well, I've kind of been interested, but my thing is like how, you know, I think one of the things that co as co-hosts, we've kind of been uh, stumbling on a little bit is to find subject matter experts, like people that we really yeah, trust that are that well diverse. So we're having that conversation. And then we, he and I, I think it was after you guys left, we're talking about prep. And I said, like, that's one of the things, like, I want to do a part two discussion about stuff. So Dr. George made an offer and I have to follow up with him on it tomorrow morning. He's willing to sit down with me one-on-one -on -one to do a prep only discussion on video for about 10 to 15 minutes yeah. that we can totally yeah, use any way that we want nice. um, to have like conversation and that type of stuff is like sort of the beginning of that. But he's like totally down with like, you know, coming on board and, and discussing things. So I'm just super excited about the fact that now we have somebody that's in an arena that I think we've danced around for a couple of years since we started the LTAS, the LTAK, you know, topic stuff. And like, like we got Cisco, you know, for kind of like the scientific study aspect yeah. of things. And um, so, yeah, I'm, it's just a new opportunity that I think is going to be pretty cool. We just have to That's, deal with the time. That may be the issue. So we'll different thing. Because he's like a half a roll away. So, you know. It's up to down. Wow. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, well, there's that. Yeah. So uh, I think we're ready to wrap up because we got things to do and places to go. Uh, people to people be people to be nice people be on wait never mind yeah anyway, uh -huh. go on <laughs> so um anything else that you, you guys want to no, say so. as a, a wrap up I mean, um, overall i have a stick unfortunately because we're using my phone for the video i have a whole series of like notes about various things that i want to talk about that i heard in passing and different stuff and it's like comical like out of the blue kind of uh, strange things. A bunch of them were at the the cigar deck last night. So the garage thing that was cigar deck. I think it was there for like four fucking hours, 
And it was funny because both uh, Tony and Chess, like some people were like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I just, I don't smoke. I used to smoke cigarettes a long time ago and I quit. And so I have no interest. And even Chess was like, why have my pipe if you want to you know, try a pipe? And I was like, no, I'm fine. Actually, what's really strange, and I don't know about the existence of this in terms of kink is, I am perfectly okay being around people who are smoking a pipe or a cigar. Yeah, me too. Like, it's not a turn on, but I enjoy it. Yeah. And so, like, um, was it, where was I that someone said about my jacket? Someone, I said something about being at the cigar deck and someone turned to me and they were like, oh, yeah, it was me, I, yes, yeah, yes, you were like, I can smell it on me. you. And I was you're like, like oh. I've been up to the cigar deck for like five hours. And I'm like, no, I can tell. And you're like, why is it bad? And I'm right, like, because no, the I way just, you said it, I, I was like, oh my God. Like, smoke. Smoke. But I also said something to, in front of uh, Tammy and, well, the whole group of them. And I turned to Chess and I said, I just had an epiphany. And he goes, what? I said, I don't think I've ever thought about this before. I said, if you smoke good quality cigars, it doesn't stink. Exactly. And he was like, right, and he's like, like just like that, bingo. Yeah. And I was like, how crazy is that? Because I said in my past, I was not necessarily a fan of like being around people who smoke cigars. Pipe, I have always pretty much loved, yeah. but cigar, like pipe, know, pipe really. tobacco is usually sweeter. But, yeah. So yeah. But, no, yeah. it was um, but it was really that was probably one of the highlights of my experience. I literally sat at that table for ever and just hung out and people came and went it was sort of like and i know this is not the intention uh it was kind of like in a way some people were holding court yeah and it was just simply they were in one spot and that's all they were doing was smoking and drinking and all the people that they know spot them and come by and say hi and i got i mean i can introduce to like 20 people i don't even remember all their names <laughs> but like tammy was awesome love you miss tammy she was like oh have you met wayne have you met nick have you blah blah and every single person she's rattling off how she knows them the titles that they have like and i'm just like hi nice to meet you and i'm just sitting there like oh my god like my brain is already too full of it's, knowledge yeah. of stuff like but it was great so it was it was pretty awesome. No, I, I will, so I might go back and hang out again. Maybe we should we'll do see. a cigar ep or a smoking episode, LTA AK about cigar play. Cigar, cigar, cigar well, play. Yeah, any of the tobacco um, stuff. Because I am the same way. I enjoy the occasional cigar, but I can't be like Chess and Tony and Tammy and all them and smoke them back to back like they do. Yeah. I just I just cannot do it. I can go through one. Yeah. And um, but no, I enjoy doing that company like at NAB. When I met up with uh, Chess and Tony and a couple of other people out there, it was great to hang out and just shoot the shit, but it was so fucking cold that I'm like, nope, I gotta go. Well, I'm enjoying my time with you guys, but I can't deal See, with See, I this. learned the lesson Thursday night, I didn't bring my fleece. Well, actually, the biggest downfall was I have a leather biker jacket, which I'm not sure how I fit into now. I haven't worn it in a long time because I got so big. So now it probably fits better, but it probably doesn't reach and zip. And I was like, God damn it, like that would have been better for like, because the weather's been cool and rainy. Yeah. So that's why yesterday I had the fleece and I was carrying it every blessed place I went because I knew eventually I'd want it. Yeah. And so I took it with me to the cigar deck, left my bag in Chelsea and Tony's room. And then it, I probably about halfway through, I finally put it on. Tony's like, are you cold? And I was like, no, I was like, the temperature's slowly dropping. And I just finally got to the point that I'm going to change, like, or so to speak, and just yeah. put that on. And then I just worked for the rest of the time. And then, I mean, I was plenty fine cool. in that case, so, but yeah. So I think overall Claw uh, 17 has been very successful. I think they've been doing well overall and that we've enjoyed the experience. Yeah. Uh, we still have to get through tonight and then tomorrow and then go home. Go home. Yeah. But we'll probably talk more about that later. And do one of those drag shows. Huh, yeah. People, oh my god, it's, it's irritating already on my, it's already, I know. It's already on my iTunes to watch. Oh, I almost well, watched it this morning. <laughs> so. People, I've been seeing shit pop up on Tumblr and Facebook, and every time I'm like, oh, what's this? What's what's this thing with Shay? Nope, not going to look at it. Nope. Because I don't want to know. I think I know who's, I think I also know who was in the bottom, too, because somebody posted a GIF. Uh, and notably, the person looks like they're performing. So I'm like, uh, that most likely is the fact because it's Snap Game. That probably was, you know, bottom two. Anyways, uh, enough about that. For the that's for the other series. So uh, thanks everybody for like, you know, listening to the show. Um, I don't have the crap up in front of me to rattle off, but um, <laughs> it's it's pretty simple. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us, go to CubsOutLoud.com. Any of the social meets, uh, type in Cubs Out Loud. Typically, is one word. You can find us. Um, and if you want to give us a ring, a ding, and leave a voicemail, like we recently had that very interesting audition one, uh, you can do it to 361 well Talk. That's 361 285 8255. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. You can find me anywhere on the web as GearBear73. 
Um, Theater Cup 79, our Puff on Breath. Uh, you could find me uh, as Cupcake76 or Pup Shutter. I don't have my spiel with me. <laughs> I know. We don't have any of our docs. We're all confused. <laughs> ah! And uh, that's pretty much it. So thank you all for uh, listening and hoping and or watching. So we got the other video thing we're going to try to do. And uh, have a good one. Bye. Good night, everyone. Bye. Yeah, that was fun. I have so got to piss. <laughs> I went a little longer than I expected. We're doing good. <sighs> Isn't and that always the case? Now you have now you have the commensurate fifteen minutes to get to yeah. wherever the hell you're gonna go. What? What? The class. The class. Oh, that's the puppy one. So you go to the yeah, the puppy one. I might be enough. I'm gonna look at the classes really quick, but see, project goes. Come on, MacBook, don't fail me now. This is the part that always makes me nervous. We do all this effort and then I get freaked out because I'm kinda like, don't lose it. So you know, I need to grab my phone and then you need to use the rest. It's the only thing about we're gonna kill the dragon crazy. At least these ones. Yeah. Because they kind of don't bunch. They bunch out. Yeah. Well, they just. I feel like I should take it to a dry cleaner and have them starch the oh. motherfucker out of it. You know. Yeah. So it's the same floor again. Turn the top of one of the.